Welcome back to Stand. You're with Kelly and Nikki Chivaka. Nikki, I want to talk to you a little bit about these Alaska state elections that we just had in 2024. When you and I started this podcast, part of the inspiration for starting it was what happened in the 2022 election. And we were so surprised and a bit discouraged about how the nation really expected a red wave. And instead, there was a red trickle. We had thought that between the Biden inflation and the horror at the border, and we had gone from energy dominance to energy reliance on foreign adversaries, the war in Ukraine, that people would go, we really want to see our defense not decimated, but instead rebuilt. We want to see a stronger and secure border. We want to see jobs filled and returned. We want to see an end to the employment crisis across the country. We want to see a booming economy again instead of this radical inflation. We want to see families doing well. We want to see a stop to the progressive agenda madness. We want to see a healthy foreign policy. We want to see things returned back to normal again. We want to see families cared for, etc. And instead, we eked out a razor thin majority in Congress of people who would advocate for those kind of policies. We saw the lowest voter turnout ever in the history of Alaska. We lost uh, key seats across the country that we thought we would pick up in swing states. And of course, we we saw what it, what happened in the country playing out these last couple years as a result of the Senate having a majority in the Biden administration going virtually unchecked. And we thought, okay, what do we do, especially on the heels of our family laying it all out on the line and, and losing, you know, just by about 19,000 votes that election when we had 19,000 super voter Republicans who didn't vote in Alaska. I thought it was just eight or 9,000. When you do all the ranked choice voting, if more people had shown up. Yeah, it was just a really surprising election turnout. When we'd heard across the state that so many people wanted to see change, that they um, said it's time for change and that their voices weren't being heard and then they just chose to opt out of their voices being heard. And so we said, well, what can we do? We really believe in not giving up. Uh, it's one of our mottos as Chewbacca's, Chewbacca's never quit. We also believe that Chewbacca's never lose because losing is a choice. You might not always win, but you can choose not to lose. And so we decided, well, what are we going to do? And part of what we wanted to do was really inspire people, not just in our state, but across the country, that you can make a difference. And I was really encouraged by what happened this election cycle, not only that Trump won by, I think, flabbergasting margins. You know, the entire country was surprised. Even CNN, when they flipped to that map, in which counties did Kamala overperform and the whole map was blank. And they lingered on it for like 30 <laughs> seconds being surprised that she didn't perform overperform anywhere. Um, that we were able to flip our, our house seat by a huge percentage margin. Um, some of the seats that we were able to flip in Alaska were really encouraging. But I was encouraged by other seats that were flipped in even swing states across the country, like the Pennsylvania Senate seat, the Ohio Senate seat, for example, toppling incumbents that were really powerful. These are all really encouraging signs. But the thing that was really encouraging for me, and I wanted to kick this over to you because I know that you have great thoughts on this, is that it wasn't just Republicans or people who would identify as Republicans or people who lean to the right who came together in this election. And I think that that's really key because we've brought on people who identify as Democrats or don't identify as Republicans on this show, all saying the same thing. And those have been some of the interviews that you and I have enjoyed the most, some of the most thought-provoking interviews. It's people from across political spectrum or people who, um, who have different political ideologies all coming to the same conclusion in this political cycle to say this is actually the best way forward for America that created what we would call a red wave, but it's not because they're identifying with a political party. It's because they're identifying with what's best for America. And I wanted you to talk about that because I thought that was what was really encouraging in this particular cycle. I think that's what's so important. Yeah, in fact, you know, even the red wave uh imagery. I, I think we've talked about this before. Like I saw it very much as a red, white, and blue wave. 
it was sure uh, to your point about the country coming together. We recognize as a country that we were losing what made us and makes us exceptional. Right. Not exceptional in the sense that other people are inferior, other nations are inferior, but exceptional in the sense that we are unique, unique in the principles that undergird and that uh, are responsible for the flourishing that we've experienced as a country for almost 250 years now. Um, unique in the makeup of uh, our population that, that that's so di so diverse and that we're united around a common set, or at least have been for 250 years almost, a common set of core values and principles that make you an American. You're not an American because you're of a certain color or ethnicity. ethnicity. You're an American because you share a conviction and an yeah. allegiance to and a loyalty to a certain uh, world view of about what it means to be human and what the nature of government is and should be and how it relates to uh, us as human beings and what mm -hmm. that interaction uh, should be. So it was very gratifying and exciting and encouraging to see our nation realize, you know what, we don't want to go down the road that uh, Kamala and Biden have been leading us and, and the people on the far left and of the political spectrum, because that is not America. They actually want to destroy America uh, as we know it. And to see people across the political spectrum say, no, I am an American, and I want to see America great again. I want right. to see us uh, in, not not poo-poo or denigrate our greatness, right. but embrace it as a good thing um, that we can do wonderful, wonderful things with going forward and into the future. So I was very encouraged by that. I was encouraged to see also the president-elect uh, recognize that red, white, and blue wave right. and start making cabinet picks and appointments that were consistent with that, you know, with, you know, Tulsi Gabbard as the, you know, DNI right. nominee. And RFK. And RFK and, and all right. of that. And at the local level here in, in Alaska, unfortunately, as you were talking about with Rob, we didn't see that, you know, that trickle down. Uh, in the same way, but we saw it at the federal level, you know, people electing, you know, the candidates at the federal level uh, as well across the political spectrum here at our state. So I'm really encouraged. Uh, I'm, a, I'm excited about what the future portends because I think we can, we have the potential uh, to, to see the country move forward in a really good direction if we can stick together and not let the the forces that are trying to divide us, you know, tear us asunder. Yeah, I think that's really good. I was just looking for a tweet that I saw Naomi Wolf had reposted from DC Drano. And I thought that he summarized it really well. He said, you know, in the last four years, they unconstitutionally mandated that people take the COVID shot and at the risk of at the threat of losing their jobs, you had to if you didn't take the COVID shot, then you lose your jobs or you lose your medical practice. They, because you would lose your license, they opened up the border and ushered in record levels of human trafficking and opioid trafficking. People have lost their relatives and loved ones to opioid abuse and to murders and homicide. They, they've flipped our schools and flipped our hospitals and flipped our social services to give away free care to illegal immigrants at the expense of the taxpayers. And he just chronicled all of the abuses that have happened at the expense of, you know, they, they withheld FEMA care in emergency situations, but sent all of our taxpayer dollars over to wars in foreign countries. They refused to help our allies in, in other countries when it would require peace for our allies that, you know, now is imminent threat and dangers for us as we let terrorists into the United States. And what happened was so significant on Election Day because he said, we have got to remember this because this is exactly what America is built on.